Are you ready for the best damn sports radio show on the planet? Man, our nation, rise up. I would like to personally welcome you to Man Hour at the Dark. Say that thing. Why bring you the host, Mike, Buck, get calm. You know what I'm talking about. Sports talk than what you about to hear right here. I second that. Go. You know that that's us when we talk about sports. Giving you facts on the field to the core. Tune in, we need the support. One hour too short, still listen some more. Oh, no, your station not dropping no music. Starts like a but Nike just do it. Down four on the fourth, we go for the win. Michael, two seconds, we taking it in. Buck Mike and Combs, you know what's going on. Man, now we're out the dark. No LA, we the big spark. No fourth and inches, won't cut short. Got the best talk in this all sports. Buzzing more than buzz beaters. We coming live off three speakers. Go. And what is up, everybody? Michael Buckhasher here with the Man Hour. Head over to manhourradio.com. Check out the merch page. We got a new and approved merch page where we like we got some new shirts popping up there. Brandon Combs did a great job on our baseball tee. The sense it is baseball season. So let's welcome the man, the myth, the legend himself, Brandon Combs, to the show. What's up, Brandon? What is going on, man? Man Hour Nation, are we ready? Uh, five days a week in the Ville. Let's yeah. do this. Yeah, 96.1 Big X Sports Radio is where we're at right right now. Every Monday through through Friday, 3 to 5 p.m. right here on the airwaves. But for you, those that are new to the show here and have not heard us, we do have a weekly segment, an interview with the man, the Ohio State Buckeye himself, the 6 foot 7 and a half, 465 pounds, runs a 4440, going to be in the NFL in three years tops. Playing for the Kansas City Chiefs, winning Super Bowls with Patrick Mahomes, hey, protecting hey, hey, his hey, blind hey. side. He's going to be playing for the Chicago Bears, protecting I don't know what quarter, some quarterback who's probably going to be underachieving and drafted way too early. <laughs> but still, he's going to be blocking for him here in Chicago. You leave, no, you leave him alone. Hey, welcome Zen Malowski to the show. What is going on, Big Zen? Not much. Just hanging out. What's up? Yeah, me, me and Zen, uh, we are kind of on a, we are reaching out a new audience here, being on the Big X Sports Radio here, here, here now, five, five days a week, Monday through Friday. So the people that don't know who you are, tell them who you are, where, where you came from, and where you're at right now. Uh, my name is Zen Uwe Mahonski. I came from Floyd Central. I played at um, Floyd Central High School, and now I'm at Ohio State to play football. Not not like Ohio State Community College. We're talking about yeah. the Ohio State. Come on, put the the in front the, of it. The Ohio State, yeah. The Ohio State. So, uh, Zen, you are technically supposed to be a be a senior in high school still right now, but you graduated early, and you have now been at school for, what, about a month and, like, two weeks maybe or like or so? Yeah, probably like that. I think I've been, like, enrolled in classes for, like, a month and a half. I've probably been – on campus for like a month and a little bit like a couple days probably okay so um so let's let's talk about the transition from being a high school senior you know like 17 years old you turned 18 the day you came to campus right like Mm -hmm. like like how has that transition been from being 17 years old and in high school to 18 and a college student now oh it's pretty weird i mean it's it it, i've kind of gotten used to it now but I mean, a lot of stuff changes, obviously, just like uh, just more responsibility, more on your own. But I like it. I love it. Like, it's so much more fun than being back at home and, you know, living with your parents and stuff. But, like, they, you know, give you a full apartment with your own, like, washer, dryer, fridge, like, just everything. So it's 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 just fun to finally be on my own. Yeah, so, like, one of the biggest things about going to college early is the opportunity to play early because, you know, you are – you were getting what six months of practice be for those other incoming freshmen and the JUCO transfers and et cetera. What is the vibe that that like you are getting? Like, how do you stack up against you know these other five star athletes that are like on the offensive line? Like, like where do you stack stack up? Um, I mean, it feels really cool. I mean, it's cool because like when we came in like as fresh like we're freshmen, obviously it just it doesn't feel like that. It feels like you're kind of like a part of the team and everything you do is to contribute to like. It doesn't feel like how it did in high school where, like, you know you're going to be playing JV and nothing you do really matters. So, like, everything right. – it, it kind of feels like you're on the team. But, um, I don't know, I feel good. It feels really good to finally, like, practice and see these other guys. And kind of, like – I feel like, um, for me at least, I really skewed image of what I thought, like, a five-star player it was. And I thought everyone would be perfect. But, no, everyone is messing up in drills, like, especially other freshmen. Just, like, 
um, seeing everyone go through the same stuff, it's kind of like, okay, yeah, this is not like, not everyone is picture perfect. It's like everyone, we're all going to have to get like to the, we're all kind of like, it just says we're all on the same level pretty much. Not the older guys. The older guys are definitely a different, like totally different level. <laughs> right. Like, like Thayer Munford, like, uh, he's going to be, this going to be his fourth year starting at left tackle. Mm. You know, he's like a 23 year old man. So, I mean, it, it's definitely <laughs> different, but, um, you know, it, it, it's just cool to see like that. Um, it, it's it's not like everyone's picture perfect. We're all kind of have stuff to work on. So right. Then, so go ahead. Oh, I was just going to ask, with all that being said, with with everything going on and, and you know, everybody messing up, where's your confidence level at? Be, you know, from when you arrived on campus to where you're at now, how do you feel like the, the early growth has gone for you as a as an Ohio State Buckeye? Oh, I feel a lot better, especially because, like, when I came in, I had never – I mean, we didn't really get caught, like, especially, like, uh, for offensive line at Floyd, we never really learned pass blocking. It was always, like, you're kind of shuffling back in an angle. So we never learned, like, the traditional, like, kick step and um, how many different sets there are. So when I came in, we like, they all knew that we didn't know anything. We didn't know, like, how to do any of that. But now it's a lot more comfortable. Like, I've learned my stands. I've learned my two-point stands. I'm probably going to – um, I've been it, it's weird because like I've been playing like left tackle the last two years and that's where I thought I was comfortable but I ended up like they put me in a right um, a right tackle stance and it felt so much better and more comfortable and like I felt like I had a lot more power out of it so that's kind of where I've been practicing a lot too so it's 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 different but I like it. So is there an opportunity for you to play some uh, right side tackle this upcoming year or they or are you thinking you're going to sit this year out as a as a off season or like, like what kind of vibe are you, are you, are you getting? I'm not sure yet. We haven't really talked about it. Like I, I think so many people have asked me that. Like, I honestly have no idea because we're so right. far away from it still. No spring ball yet. So I really just going to see what coach stud thinks and I'm cool with whatever, honestly, but um, the right side, left side, it, it's weird. Cause like everyone, like no one has a specific position here is what I learned is that when you get here, like you're, not really like a, an offensive tackle or a guard or a center. You're an offensive lineman, so you play everywhere. So like, mm. like you learn every position and you learn every um, like, especially when we're learning plays and stuff. What I've learned is that like they want you to know every position and what everything every person on the line does for every play. So it kind of just um, just wherever they need you, that's where they they're gonna put you. Like so, like the best five guys. Yeah, like I, I kind of feel like if you know every every spot and then like what every position has to do like that makes your job a whole lot easier because like because you because like you know that like that guard is 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 supposed to go up to that second tier and you know cut off that mic bad backer is so like you have more at ease like hey i can just take my guy and not worry about that guy like like is like is that kind of the vibe that you get yeah, exactly. And, like, we're learning how to read defenses and stuff. And it's something I never even, like, realized that, like, um, I don't know if it's just because we're – it's, like, this is the level of football that we're at. But it's, like, so much stuff that, like, I understand defense is so much better. I understand that, like, when I see a stacked corner in a – or a stacked corner safety that, like, there's a chance that that corner is going to blitz or, like, um, if there's an open gap somewhere, like, someone's going to be filling that gap. They're never going to have – like, um, they're always going to be gap sound everywhere. And just just stuff like that, or like if they have one deep safety, just like just just knowing how the play is going to be affected by each formation that the defense is in, or if they have like a walked up linebacker, they know that something there might be a stunt happening on the inside to cover up a gap. But yeah, there's a lot of stuff. So right. with, with everything up there as well, like this is going to be a two part question here. I want to know a, a couple of things about transitioning from a high school player to a division one college football player. What has been the hardest transition for you? One and, and two, what has been the easiest transition for you? Um, I guess just getting used to the technique and stuff and like learning, kind of having to relearn stuff, like relearning a stance, relearning like how you take steps, relearning how to like shift your weight and like how like, to just sit in a comfortable two point stance for me was uh, is still hard. I still need to. I still work on that. Um, but probably the easiest is just in like the uh, amount of work that we have. I guess it's like when when I come in like the lifting. I guess that's been the easiest transition because a lot of it. It's weirdly enough, a lot of like the players that came in had never done hang clean or power clean or anything. 
So when we relearned all that, like, I mean, that Coach Gumble kind of had us really good, well set up with all the stuff that he does. So I already knew how to hang clean, power clean, and, like, have good form and all that. So that's probably been the easiest part. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so, then, like, so like the one thing that I can tell you is, like, when you do weights, they break you down 100% because it is all about technique at the at the end of the day. You can be a 400-pound squatter, but if your technique sucks, they're going to knock you down to 100 and, 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 like, 10 pounds. And that is an ego check there. Like, you have to check your ego at the door and, and like, look, like, this is going to uh, better me in the in the long run, 100%. Oh, yeah. And it's, I mean, it's, coming, it's also cool tonight because, like, when we're lifting in groups, they almost have all of us do, like, the same, like, the same weight. So, like, or not the same weight, but, like, they never have us go super, like, like for a super heavy set of five. It's always, like, uh, it's like say a super heavy set for someone's, like, 265, they always keep you, like, 225 or 245 so you have, like, good technique and get the reps and like just to so your body doesn't basically like you fail reps and get destroyed. Right. Yeah. Basically. So we got a couple questions coming in here on the uh, chat line. Tori Anderson wants to know Chicago style or New York style pizzas. And he's trying to order food <laughs> right now. Um, probably New York style pizza. If oh, I, did, if I, did pick I one. thought I taught you better. <laughs> New York oh. style is so trash. I was up there for one time, one time when I was little, and I loved it. But I never had Chicago style pizza, so I, I couldn't. Well, look, since, since you're going to be blocking for the Bears here in about four years, it's like you upside. Get you it's like upside down Chicago pizza. style deep dish, man. You got you got to get that Chicago style deep dish in you because that's much better than New York style pizza, man. I'll try. Then just go to just come home and go to Pizza Hut, and you'll be perfectly fine. And just hand toss pizza. Who cares about Chicago or New York? Why? You got any questions for uh, Zen before we let him go for the night? Yeah, so I, I want to apologize, Zen. I uh, I had some technical difficulties and stuff getting on here, but we're here now. But uh, So I saw something on Twitter, okay? So you, you know Nikki is a huge Ohio State fan. She's Colum- she's from Columbus and stuff. So she, she you know, is really involved with the social media with Ohio State. So I always get my Ohio State fill with her. Uh, mm-hmm. But I saw something uh, Travion posted about Ohio State had their freshman opening day where they literally just killed you guys. Like, it was just – the way they explained it on Twitter was it was considered hell day for Ohio State freshmen, and they pretty much just made you all decide, are you for this or are you not for this? So w- how bad was that? I mean, Ohio State is the Ohio State. They're the – you know, if not Alabama, they're the best college football program out there. So what would hell day at Ohio State look like? Gosh, uh, I – well, it, it's called Matt Drills. I don't. I think I told Coach. Yeah, I told Coach Buck about this. I'm not sure if it was live or not. I honestly can't remember. But um, it's basically like you have there's like six stations, so four mats and two like there's a tug of war station and a like rope battle station where you're like just like standing up with two ropes. But basically, there's four mats and it's like two hours of just like chaos and insanity, and it's like the entire team. So pretty much, there's six groups, and each each group is on a different station. So, like, say you're group one, you'd be on, like, the four-point seat roll station. And it's basically, like, um, there's five lines, and there's three people in each line. And you come up, snap down, and you have to, like, dive out onto the mat as fast as you can. Then you have to get up on your four-point stance, and you're, like, shuffling, uh, shuffling, and your hands and feet are moving. And they'll point, like, a certain direction. You got to seat roll, point another direction. You got to seat roll. And then um, when they point, like, back, you got to, like, roll forward. But it's basically just like constant movement. And if you like mess up, uh, if you mess up the technique, or if you mess up, like you don't snap down fast enough, or you don't snap down low enough, or you don't like jump out far enough or high enough, you have to reset. And the later the groups, the more that they reset you. So like if you're group three, you're the last group, they bring everybody back. And each station is like ten minutes long. So um, there's like different drills for each station. That was just one one station, but like. It's basically, yeah, it's basically just two hours of constantly, like, just drills moving and you just getting yelled at. And you got, like, it's more mental than anything because you just have to, like, like, when you're, like, super tired and you can, like, barely stand up and you just have to, like, remember, like, okay, I got to snap down to, like, this certain level and I got to dive out at least six feet and I got to, like, roll, jump. And, like, like as, as soon as they say it, tell you to do it. And that's pretty much it. It's 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 extremely hard physically, but it's it's almost harder mentally just because you have to remember to like because if you like I said like if you're the third group and like both groups have already gone and you don't snap down in time, then everyone comes back and you're getting yelled at by the whole team, and Jeez. it's just it's just a whole you know. It's so it, it not only so not only is it like physically tough, it's mentally bearing on you as well. Yeah, because it's like 
it's they they said that we do it because it's like replicating like the fourth quarter of like a hard game because you want to see like yeah. who's going to come forward and like lead and like how are people going to hold up when it gets really hard and who's going to like you know give up and go like fake puke in a trash can so they don't like finish <laughs> the drills and stuff. But yeah, there's like yeah. Tra- there's trash cans by each mat because there's a lot of people that end up puking. But I'm not gonna lie, up? Zen. No. I'm not gonna lie, man. I, I, I'm about to throw up just listening to all the action that you're doing <laughs> well, um, because I'm getting tired from it. So, <laughs> well, it's every Friday, so it's it's a great way to end the week. Oh man, <laughs> a two day recovery then, process. And then we have right. our. Well, that's not the end of the day. It's like that's like that's the mat drill part. But then right after mat drills, you have um, like we did like six inch box pushes where you have to like push the length of the field down and back, and you have to like beat the guy next to you, or you have to redo it. And then um, there's, we have our team up north workout, which is like I think it's like two hundred seventy six days or something until we play them. So like each day, like it's a push up. So like you do like. We do like ten push ups, you're counting like one, two, three, four, five, ten. And then you have to do like different like core exercises and you have to hold a plank. And it's like you just keep counting all the way up to two hundred and seventy and each week it'll go lower. So like I think this week it'll be like two sixty eight or something like that. And then at the very end you do uh at the very end then we have fifteen push ups for fifteen games to get to the national championship every year. And then I think the date I think it's over after that, but it's a long it's a very long two and a half hours. Jeez. Uh, so, favorite restaurants since you've been up there so far? I know, I know they got to kind of have you guys sectioned away from everything, but so far since you've been up there, favorite favorite restaurant or, or favorite food, something that you've ate up there that's been delicious? Uh, probably Buckeye Donuts. It's like this uh, – it's it's the we get donuts every Saturday for off at some line school, and that's where we always get them from, and they're so good. Buckeye so, Donuts, huh? Mm-hmm. They're good. <laughs> so, Zen, before we let you go here – I mean, it's it's been a few weeks since since like like I've seen you, and uh, I can tell you put on some weight, man. Like your arms you look, are bigger. You look buff, yeah. man. <laughs> you can go ahead. You, you can flex those arms, man. Like you've been working your ass off. You, like, show, you man. look like you, you look go. almost you look almost as good as I do. I know. Oh my God, it's dude. it's, it's it, close. Wyatt. It's close. You look almost as good as I do. I'm just saying. You know, it, it's funny because I really haven't gained any weight. When I got here, I got the flu really bad for a week, so I ended up losing like ten pounds. So I had like I've kind of just gained back ten pounds, but I guess I gained back better weight than what I had on. So now we're well, kind of you just look going. good. So you Thank definitely you. look good, man. You, like you definitely. You, so so like one like one thing you can always tell is a person's shoulders because like when you start to gain weight and like get bigger, it, like it always comes in your shoulders first. Mm-hmm. Most. people people i should say and you know you're you almost look like a 23 three year old man <laughs> almost <laughs> trying <laughs> all right Zen, well thank you for joining us man and uh you know well we let we look forward to talking to you next week no all right guys that is zen the ohio state uh offensive lineman there i mean I mean we can't say right tackle or left or like left tackle because they said they're all offensive offensive linemen there so mean yeah man for for a second i thought you two were gonna like ask him if he's gonna be in a ohio state football player calendar or something yeah. like well, well why I not mean, you guys are all hey, like, he looks good sh- oh, you look buff he does like i mean holy moly. he does man hey all right Combs, credits give credit where credit's due I, I Combs, agree. do you realize he has to jump six feet from his knees so he has to jump the the, the height of me i mean Two heights of, uh, of like you to pass the drill. Two and like, a half you, heights of me. Buddy. That's crazy. How do you, that's crazy. How do you do about that? <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, so yeah. we are going to take a quick little break here on the man hour. We got some NF or we, we I should say we got some sports headlines coming up after like after the break. So stay tuned. And we also have the baseball lackey himself, Hoffy, coming with us with this pre. It, is it considered preseason uh, power ranking still? Or are we, yeah, are we going with it's pre- still preseason power okay. ranking because the preseason so, just kicked off today. Um, yeah. But yeah. Major League Baseball preseason power rankings coming with our man, Hoffy. So, guys, we'll be right back here on the Man Hour. Oh. Wow. 
And welcome back to the Man Hour, guys. Michael Buckeyes along with Brandon Combs and Wyatt Williams. Head over to manhourradio.com. Check out the blog section and become a member over there. Every Monday through Thursday, we do an after show. So at 10 p.m. East Coast time, you can join us on the after show on the members only tab. So let's welcome the guys back into the show, guys. Hey, like, why we is just on time for this segment? Yeah, he, uh, why is on time? He, uh, <laughs> he is not, uh, no technical difficulties, uh, you know. Uh, AKA, I was oversleeping. Like, uh, let's just be, uh, let's just be. That's honest. what happened. That's what happened. The maids forgot to wake you up, didn't they, before the show? Is that uh, what happened? I don't sleep at eight thirty at night. I wake, I wake up at two. Come on, guys, you know this. Or one forty six. Just taking your nightly nap. I thought you just had a power nap or something. It's no, all good no. though. It, 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 it is all good because we are going to talk some bread and butter of the man hour here, and it is time for some football talk. As we kind of hinted on last Saturday's show here on 96.1 Big X Sports Radio, that Russell Wilson was wanting a trade. I mean, not not necessarily wanting a trade, but he said he would waive a trade for, I think it was like four or five teams that he come out and like and said, uh, some of them being the Jets, Giants, uh, Raiders, and then some other teams uh, that, later com- that later came out during the day. But why I'm going to kick it to you first here, because I think you said this is a bluff, but is 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 Russell Wilson bluffing, or does he actually want out of Seattle? Um, so I don't think he's necessarily want like. Bl- I think it's a little bit of both. So I think it's a fl- a bluff because you know at the end of the day he wants to go to he w- he doesn't want to move. Nobody likes moving. You want to stay at the same house you live in. You want to stay in the same city you've been in for a long time now. You want to keep, you know, he, he's got a good wide receiver core that's young and younger than him, so they'll be there longer than him. Uh, he's got a good head coach in in Pete Carroll that makes some poor decisions sometimes uh, with his scheming on Russell. But also at the same time, I think he's also tired of having no offensive line, of having a defense that sucks. So I think that that's also part of it. So I think it's a little bit of both. But I'm going to lean a little more toward that it's a bluff. I think that this is a scare tactic and, you know, I think that the Seahawks are seeing all these posts from large uh, groups, l- large media groups that are having edits of Russell Wilson wearing a Saints jersey, Russell Wilson wearing a Bears jersey or a Cowboys jersey. And I think that the Seahawks are getting a little nervous and they're like, okay, we screwed around with this way too long. Let's go ahead and get him what he wants. You know, he, he is our franchise quarterback. He is, he is the guy that we've put all this money into Let's get him what he needs. Let's get him what he needs to get back to the Super Bowl. After all, he does. It does make sense what he's saying. The last time uh, that that he was, you know, good, he had a good defense. So let's get him some more defense. You know, the last time he was good, he had a, you know, decent offensive line or, or better than what they have now. Let's get him some more offensive line. Maybe a right tackle or you know a left tackle that's younger than uh, Trent Brown, I believe, is their left tackle. So I think I think it's a little bit of a both, but I, w- I will lead a little bit more toward the bluff side. Combs, before I let you like start there, uh, let me hit on some points that White says says said said there. Get a better defense. They picked up Jamal Adams in the off season. There, they signed Bobby Wagner to a pretty good deal. Uh, they ha- they they improved the defense of defense of a of, of a line by signing a Dunlap in the season. So, what other help on the defense can you possibly want? C- come on, White. They actually have to perform, though, Buck. I mean, they were. Yeah, a very I mean, when you look at the defense. when you look at his defense when it was good, he had two good safeties rather than just Jamal. He had three good linebackers rather than just one in Bobby Wagner. He had four good down linemen instead of just um, Carlos Dunlap. So and what you're he saying is Russell Wilson is just an average quarterback that needs help around him to succeed. 
right? No, no. I mean, like That's he has, they have a good offense saying. that works well. It's just the defense mm-hmm. doesn't create stops. They're, you know, they I see what you're every doing game. There, every game is a shootout. <laughs> I see what you're doing. That's there. what I'm saying. Stop it. He go he go. is an above average quarterback. Um, does he, you know, where does he go? Where does he fit? You know, look, you guys, you know, dangled it out there for me last week talking about, oh, he's gonna, you know, he wants to go to Chicago. I know you guys like to tease him. And, and look, I know that he said it. I know he, he said one of the places he would go is Chicago, but I don't know why. I don't know why any quarterback would want to come into this organization and, and, and do anything because of the way that it's currently constructed. Um, I think that, uh, you know, I think that Dallas is a good fit for him if they don't give Dak the the franchise tag. Um, I think that Dallas should maybe even think about a trade and, and try to acquire Russell Wilson for Dak Prescott. Um, you know, you probably – you might even get more than just Russell Wilson in that trade. So there are a lot of places that where Russell Wilson can go. I don't think he's bluffing. I think he was really done – um, in Seattle, I, th- I think he sees this quarterback carousel going on. I think maybe he thinks a change of scenery will help him, you know, be better. I I just don't know. Like, you're not going to go anywhere right now other than Dallas and have a better receiving core to work with than what you have now. You're not going to go anywhere and, and have a better run game than what you have now. So I uh, you I, I just don't. I don't know what he thinks he's going to get with help um, because I think the, the pieces are there uh, in Dallas. Um, I don't, but I also think that the pieces are there in Seattle. I, I don't see much difference between Dallas and Seattle and Dallas is really the only place that makes sense for both sides. So one thing that I want to bring up, actually several points here. One point is, is that um, one of our fans here, coach tip, he sent me a text. I believe it was Saturday afternoon after the, uh, like after our show on the Big X on Saturday. There, he he said the the only way Russell Wilson gets traded is if it goes to the Jets or the Giants because his wife, I believe it's Sierra, wants to uh, like it like it will better her it will better her career if she is in New York. So that is why he is wanting to leave Seattle and go to New York. First things first. How big of like? I mean, first of all, Sierra is a pretty big musical name. If if I'm not mistaken, I mean, like I know her music from somewhere, some somehow. But but how big of music career do you really need? Like when your husband is making a hundred million dollars, I mean, like, do you really need to make that much more cash? Uh, so well, and if she's uh, looking to further her music career, uh, she is not a country artist. So why would she want to go to Texas? Well, it uh, said New York, the Jets, or the Giants. I said nothing, not, nothing about the Cowboys. Oh, I thought you said Dallas. Yeah. My bad. No, no. Uh, but, but I also feel like most um, musical people like L.A. is like the spot, right? So, so why is not the L.A. Rams on the list or uh, the? They got Stafford, Vegas Ra- Raiders. Vegas, Maybe, but, Vegas wouldn't be bad. Yeah, I mean, but but like, let's say that the L.A. Rams, you know, came up in that conversation. Would the Rams part from Stafford to take Russell Combs? Um, man, that's a good question. That's a tough one. Yeah, that's a very tough one. Um, I don't even know really how to answer that one. I think I think it would be more the less of not an LA decision. I think it would be more of a Seattle decision. I don't think Seattle would want to give up Russ for Stafford. The only quarterback right now I can I can I can truly see there are two quarterbacks I can actually see Seattle actually giving up Russ for, and that is uh, either either Derek Carr because they would if you all you all saw that deal that you all sent out earlier if they get those two first round picks as well to go along with it that would work out for him and then Dak Prescott those are the only two guys I could really I can't see the Raiders would think about. Derek Carr plus two first round draft picks for Russell Wilson. I think Derek Carr is a better quarterback than Russell Wilson. Well, well the, no, but the, the, I think well, Derek the first, Carr. Yeah, they would right. only give up one first round pick. Yeah. Okay. Be- because the because the other pick would come from the Cowboys. So yeah. so so a uh, Carr Carr would actually go to the Cowboys. Dak would go to the C- C- Seahawks, and Russell would go to the uh, Las Vegas. Like I like I, th- I think that's how it would kind of pan out. That's an out interesting in three team trade. Um, yeah. 
I do you see that happening in football? I mean, three team trades in football are very, very rare, especially three team trades when it involves your franchise quarterbacks. Well, uh, I mean, I don't think that trade is it, it is going to happen because the Cowboys would have to sign Dak to a deal because there is no way that trade is going to happen on a franchise tag. Because meaning, right. yes, the Seattle Se- Seahawks get Dak. But he is on a franchise tag, so meaning he is a free agent at the end of the year. He can do whatever he whatever he wants because in the NFL you can only get franchise tagged twice, and the if only I'm other person Dak, to do that was Kirk Cousins. I'm hoping they keep doing the Kirk. Yeah, I, I was just gonna say I'm hoping that he keeps he, they keep Kirk Cousins in me, and because he gets if they franchise tag him this year, he gets thirty seven million. If they right. franchise tag him again next year, he gets fifty seven million. Like, well, they can't. <laughs> well, well, they, well, they, they, they can't do it next yeah, year. Yeah, they it can. A, it's a two-year no, yeah. cut. I thought. No, you could. Uh, I believe it's. Uh, I want to say it's three, but uh, they could absolutely franchise him this year and next year as well. But if they did so, it just. I mean, the the amount just is is insane. Fifty-seven million dollars for one year for Dak Prescott is what he yeah, would get. Man, At that man. point, why don't you just sign him to a contract? <laughs> Well, so the so so the reason why Dak Prescott did not sign that deal for the Cowboys last year was because the Cowboys were wanting that fifth year deal or the fifth year and that like and then Dak was only wanting yeah. four years. So when his contract was up, he was still in his prime and he could sign that sign a sign a sign a another hundred yeah. million dollar type of thing. And as over well. here on the chat line, Drew says, "I thought that uh, Dak had a no trade clause too." I do not believe so. I believe Dak he's still on his is not under contract. Yeah, he's still on his. He he was yep. franchise tagged last year, um, and right now I don't. Yeah, I don't believe he has. I think he's got a restricted contract because yeah. they have until I believe March 9th to make a determination on whether or not to franchise tag him or let him walk. Or there are only deal. very few players in the NFL that have no trade clauses and worked into their contract. A couple yeah. of them being Patrick Mahomes, Deshaun Watson, Russell. And then I think maybe like Aaron Rodgers might have a no a no trade clause right, as well. Right. So, yeah. but why any uh, closing thoughts be, be, before we move on to the next topic? Dallas uh, should not move on from Dak. I think Dak's the guy in Dallas. Yeah, I agree. That's about about as dangerous as I'm going to get. Come on, man, toe that line. Unless a you bit. can get to Sean Watson, that's the only deal I make for Dak. Oh, Even oh, then. here we go, here we go. I got I got a hot topic for you. Ready? And and involves something Combs said earlier. Chicago has a better wide receiver core than Seattle. Stop it. There you go. Stop it. And I'm going to say that Prescott's better than Deshaun Watson. Jeez, I'm curl. I can't, I can't say that. Oh, but my God, with you two. I Deshaun, swear Deshaun God. Watson is the second best oh quarterback, God. or second, second so, most valuable player in the league. Moving on to the next topic here. Tiger Woods was in a car accident. I believe it was last Thursday, guys. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. Yeah. Or sorry, correct. last last Wednesday, I should say, because we did a Thursday show on it. Uh, so uh, he did break both of his legs uh, or, bo- or both of his ankles and shattered his ankles. Uh, so today during the – or Sunday during the golf tournament – a lot of the players wore red in honor of Tiger because because everybody knows that when Tiger he wears red on Sunday because you know that's like he's going for the blood type of thing and red shirt forward. black pants. Yep. So Combs, let me ask you this: Tiger Woods pretty much changed golf the way we like see it now, right? Back in the day before yeah. Tiger Woods, it, it like it, it was a very uh, white tie event, right, or a black tie event. Well, did did Tiger Woods save golf? Yeah, I I think back before Tiger Woods, it was very much an old man type of sport. Like a lot of it was an older generation. You know, the guys who were retired or, or the guys that were out on the golf course all the time, and then the very few that you know just loved the game and, and you know were younger were actually into it like that. Um, I think that. Um, Tiger Woods, not only did he he change golf, but he brought in a completely different generation. I mean, he was an 18-year-old on the PGA Tour that brought people to see him play. And I was, you know, I was in my early 20s when he started playing, and, I, like, I absolutely loved having him on. Um, and so... He for me is the reason why I got into golf. He for me is is 
is golf. He's the greatest golfer in the world. I, yeah. I think he's the greatest golfer of all time. Um, you know, obviously some people argue with me about Jack Nicholas and all that other good stuff, but Tiger Woods was the reason why you would go to watch a golf event and the things that he was doing were never seen before. So it, it was amazing to watch. It was fun to watch. Obviously later in his career, you know, all the stuff with, with, you know, that went on where we lost him for a couple of years, um, you know, due to some of his own demons, but he was, he was absolutely everything to golf and he absolutely transcended the game for sure. Oh yeah. No, I want to bring up this comment real quick. And this is exactly what I was going to say. I know, I know the, 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 uh, comparison seems crazy at the moment, but like Combs said, he brought in this new generation to golf that wasn't really a thing. Back before Tiger, it was like you said, it was the black tie event, the gentleman's game. You know, there wasn't really, you know, any kind of cheering. You know, it was all just bass clapping. But then, you know, now you have guys, the masters that hit this great shot and the place goes nuts. They all start screaming, uh, clapping, you know, the place goes crazy. And it's essentially what you see in Happy Gilmore. I mean, I think that's a really good comparison. That's what I was going to say. But, Drew, I, I got to give him the shout-out. He said it first. Uh, but I, I think that's the best comparison I could make because he just revolutionized the game. You know, he brought a whole new crowd to it. Um, it, it was all, like like Combs said, it was all older guys. Now, golf would have went on. I don't I don't want to say he necessarily, like, like kept the game alive because – I'm going to say he kept the game alive. He put it on yeah. CBS every Sunday. Absolutely. But just golf is such a golf is such a popular sport now, that it's 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 now, it's like a Yeah, it wasn't as popular back then. We have a golf channel right now because of Tiger Woods. Right. There was nobody out there that was watching every single Sunday to I you know, I look, my uncle who is in his 60s now he was uh, an avid golf fan. Like he loved, he would watch every tournament on TV. But even he has said, and I asked him about this. I said, "What was it like before Tiger Woods came?" He said, "I, I could only watch the majors because these other tournaments weren't on TV." And ever since Tiger Woods has come, it, he's so must see TV that they've put more events on TV, and I get to watch everything now. Tiger Woods is the reason why golf is as you know, highly watched as it is. So, uh, so one comment that I saw here and like, I was going to address it as well. Uh, Combs, if you want to bring that comment from Tori Anderson said, like they had to basically lengthen the, the, uh, the golf courses. I, I, I believe the term was called tiger, tiger proofing them. Right. I mean, you know, they, 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 they added a extra hundred yards onto like every course and just, just, just because of his just his, his pure driving ability and and like people want to like really focus on the driving ability of Tiger Woods but his where you make your money in the golf is your mid-range game like yeah. being being able to to take out the 6 iron and hitting it a a 166 six yards right. on a dot every time. Well, that's you know, the like, other thing too is uh, when you t- when Tiger was in his in his prime and when he was really running tournaments. I mean, he was pretty much winning every tournament. But right. there, you would tune into a tournament, and as soon as Tiger Woods would go to hit his ball, they would break away to watch Tiger hit the ball. They they called it Tiger Watch. He had his own segment on every <laughs> broadcast. Like it was, it was absolutely insane. Tiger Mania was was absolutely nuts at its peak. No, and he and he definitely. I mean, I, I couldn't agree more. He absolutely changed the game and stuff. Um, but you know, he's he's an incredible player. And, and the biggest thing that uh, I I just hope that we get to see him eventually back in the game. I don't think we will, but mm-hmm. I I hope we see him as some kind of an advocate for the PGA or something. Uh, me and Combs talked about that on the last show. <laughs> Yeah. Hope to see him at at some kind of a uh, impact star on golf, which I I'm, I guarantee you he will. Yeah. yeah. No, I agree. A big, I, I bet you a big impact we'll see from him here. Give me just one second. So, a Combs, if you want to go ahead we'll and see that right there, I bet he writes. I bet he writes many more golfing books and books about this injury, <laughs> books about his you know dark period in his time. Yeah. yeah. How so, about a sure. book of not of not how to get caught cheating? That that would be a bestseller. Oh, God. 
I'm, I'm that was that, 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 that was a I'm song written by Shaggy. Yeah. But yeah, anyway, right. let's go ahead me. and, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> let's go ahead and get over to the uh, chat line here before we cut to another break. Uh, talking about the Dak Prescott thing, Tori Anderson says he should push for a trade to New Orleans. The city is shining just like his career. That's a play on the Sierra song, "Shine Bright Like a Diamond." Yeah, there you go. Um, so. But I don't think his style of play would fit in New Orleans because, like, I mean, because you know, like Drew Brees was such a pocket, pocket type yeah. of guy, and like, I mean, and like, yes, I, 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 I do like Sean Payton as a coach, but I, but there are certain coaches that that you know don't evolve as coaches just because they've been coaching the same way for so long, and like, I don't think he wants to evolve. He wants to draft a pocket quarterback to replace yeah. Drew Brees. And then there was a uh, a, a co- uh, conversation going on on, on YouTube. Vinny uh, Kiros asked, uh, Combs, do you think the Cubs can make the playoffs? This is a good uh, lead-in for our next segment. Um, yeah. I, I do uh, think that the Cubs can absolutely make the playoffs. I actually think that they can win their division. They're playing up against a uh, a very weak division. Granite, get a, I, look, they lost four of their five starters out of their rotation, but they did a good job replacing them. Um, and it's a very weak division. I know the Cardinals just added Nolan Arenado, but that is that's still a very weak lineup. The Cardinals don't have the pitching. The Brewers, I think, will probably be the the biggest test. However, I don't think the Brewers have enough pitching either. Um, which Tori Anderson, everybody here, is sleeping on the Brewers, and that's a Cubs yeah. fan saying that. But I gotta say, Combs, speaking of, speaking of uh, baseball, real quick, just to interrupt you. I don't mean to. I'm sorry. How excited were you as a Cubs fan? Because I know I freaked out. How excited were you to see Jake Arrieta back in a Cubs uniform? Because I was watching some of the warm-ups the other day for the Cubs, and to yeah. see Jake Arrieta in a Cubs uniform again, that was so cool. I, I had the biggest smile on my face. It, it's one of those things where – so I'm, a, I'm, I'm very much um, a player – you know, I'm very loyal to to players, especially to anybody who was on the 2016 team. Um, so to see Jake Arrieta back um, with the Cubs is very cool, especially to, to know that he turned down bigger contracts to come back for a reunion with the Cubs yeah. was even cooler. Um, you know, I like but, I walked down the hallway and looked at my Jake Arrieta poster, and I just looked at it. I said I said there for probably like I don't know, dude, two minutes, three minutes, just smiling at yeah. it. Sure. And I. I don't know what Tory Anderson was smoking, but he says the Brewers win 97 and win the division. There is no team in the <laughs> NL Central that is winning 97 games, and, and he wants Huffy like to Brewers go ahead. And, I like the Brewers, and, and I like the Brewers in man. Top three. That's, Their pitching that's sucks, dude, but yeah, they got Yelich, man. I I, I really like Yelich. You just said it right there. They're, they have no pitching. Yelich they, is really their only. They've got some players around them. No, no. They, they have all of the Royals from the 2015 team on that team almost. Oh, my God. If you want to win, if you want to win World Series, go get the World Series team and build it, right? And that's the way, just the way it is. That's so speaking of World out. Series, we do have Major League Baseball power rankings coming up next here on the Man Hour. So uh, our like our man Hoffy is going to give us his his weekly power rankings. We're going to have him every Monday here on the Man Hour. So stay tuned, guys, right here on the Man Hour. We'll be right back right after this little break.
check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. And welcome back to along with Brandon Combs and Wyatt Williams themselves. Let me go ahead and bring the boys back wrong on. Button. If I stop pushing the wrong buttons, it would be highly, <laughs> highly appreciated. But it is that special time of year. Sunday was the first spring training of the yes, of sir. the Major League Baseball season 2021. If you guys were following Combs on any social media, at ManHour underscore Combs on the, on the Twitter machine where you can find him, he was on cloud nine since about 1.30 a.m. East I Coast time. He was just like... spring training games today. <laughs> There you Four. go. Like, what did, did you watch them on the on the Major League Base, Base, Baseball channel, or you watch them on something I, else? I watched one on uh, MLB Network. I watched a little bit of uh, the White Sox on Comcast Sports Chicago, um, and then I caught a couple others on the MLB at app, app bat app actually. Yeah. Uh, so I so so Combs being a you know a passive baseball fan, I need to step up my game this <laughs> year. So. So I so I actually purchased the Fox Sports Midwest this year on my Sling TV, Atta and I've boy. already pre-recorded every Kansas City Chief or Kansas City Royals game. I always want to say Chiefs, Kansas City Royals game this C C C season. So I am I am prepared to tear our man Hoffy apart on his ridiculous baseball rankings day <laughs> in and day out. But Hoffy, welcome to the show, man. Tell the people a little bit about who you are, where you're from, and. What what gives you the ability to give us power rankings each like each week? Because you guys lack the the pure baseball knowledge, so someone's gonna you know Whoa. help you guys out. Whoa. Wow. That that Whoa. goes for you, Cole. Already shots fired with that. Come on, that is look ridiculous. look, Hoffy. Look, I, you know, being the baseball lackey, I allow you to put down these power <laughs> rankings every week, so I could tear them apart. However, this week, I I don't really have too many problems with you right now. I, I figured. And I kept your Astros out just to just to you know keep yeah, you. Stop saying my Astros. Don't ever 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 put me in the same sentence with the Astros ever again. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so so, uh, so Hoffy, every every person has two teams. Like let's just be flat out honest. Like you can be no, a what? Boston Sox, but you know you are going to root for the Padres. What? Holmes is a Cubs fan, but he is going to be rooting for the Astros all season long because he knows where the true talent is. No, is no, he's rooting like Houston. Now we're out in L.A. You're about to get the mute button. You're about to get the mute button. <laughs> First of all, I look. I am. I, I admit it. Look, after the Cubs, I'm a baseball fan. Like I love. I'll watch every game anywhere, anytime. I'm just hoping for a good game. I just. I, I love the game. I don't root for any other team other than the Cubs, but I just like to watch baseball. So, Hoffy, man, look, man, I, I'm glad you're here. I took a look at these power rankings before the show. Um, so why don't we go ahead and get to them here? Uh, who you got at number ten? So uh, we'll get, we'll get right into it. So at number ten, we got the Toronto Blue Jays. Uh, I believe Vladimir Bichette, Biggio, um, Guriel Jr. Uh, you added All Stars in George Springer, Marcus Simeon. So they have one of the stronger lineups. The question marks are going to be at the corner spots uh, next to Springer in the outfield. Uh, but I got Nate Pearson. I think he's what the number ten uh, prospect on the list. If he can have a, a solid year and be a, a number two for them. Um, Behind their number one, I think they can. Uh, they might be able to take the the you know the AL East if uh, the Yankees don't stay healthy. Yeah, I look. I, I love the Toronto Blue Jays. I love what they did this off season. Uh, they made a lot of moves. They were quiet, but they made a lot of moves. Um, and plus, a very good young, solid core. Um, and I I think that the Blue Jays are really going to make a lot of. They're going to be a la the 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 Tampa Bay Rays last year. Um, mm-hmm. They're going to be one of those teams that you don't see coming, and they could probably make a run at an American League crown this year. Yeah. So you and think I, you George know. Springer is the is the is the deciding factor of the Blue Jays this year? No, I don't think George Springer is. I, I think that I think George Springer in that lineup was a good move. Um, I think that you know Vlad Guerrero Jr. is. Okay. I think I the say. way Vlad Guerrero Jr. goes is the way that the Toronto Blue Jays will go. If he has a great year, Absolutely. the Blue Jays are going to be very happy. But add, adding Springer position. just get, gets you someone that's been there and that you know just going to help you you know when it comes to those big moments. That's that's why I like Springer. He's going to help you fill the IR. I, I, I don't see him being healthy oh, at all, like, all this it. year. Stop it. I'm saying. Predicting freaking injuries? Is that where no, we're I'm, going now, Buck? I, I am not predicting injuries. I am predicting that they have somebody else better to fill that spot come what? about – June or July. Have you met? Stop, Hoffy. Disregard um, anything that Buck or Wyatt say. Stick to your because, Midwest TV package, Buck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> St- stick to that. All right, who you got at number nine? 
Number nine, uh, I got the Oakland Athletics. Um, you know, they got Puck. I'm a big fan in, in Manaya. Uh, I would actually get to see him a couple years ago throw the no-hitter against my Red Sox. Uh, Frankie Montaz, uh, it's going to give them a solid rotation. They're going to have a reliable bullpen. Uh, and add in Elvis Ingendrews is going to be a little, you know, unique at first coming over from the Rangers. Um, but you also got Mitch Moreland. So I think, uh, you know, and he's a big doubles guy. And in that ballpark, that's definitely going to help that athletics uh, lineup. Yeah, I think Elvis Andrews was a great pickup for them um, uh, in a already pretty good lineup. They've got a pretty – the Oakland A's, and I say this all the time, people sleep on them heading into the regular Absolutely. season. And the Oakland A's find a way every year to at least be in the race in the AL West, if not winning the AL West and making it to the playoffs. They've, they've been in the playoffs the last three seasons, like mm-hmm. three seasons in a row. And, and people still, when you talk about the AL West, want to talk about the Astros. They want to talk about the Angels coming up. They want to talk yep. about, you know, all these other teams. Everybody sleeps on the A's. I, I, I don't understand it. My The Angels are a team that uh, I want to watch out for, especially if uh, Otani stays healthy. I mean, if he's yeah. going to hit those triple digits, you know, uh, we had question marks as to whether he's going to pitch or strictly play in the field. So I, I do like him being a – a two-way player. So if, if he stays healthy, that's going to be a big help for the, uh, the angels. We'll see if they can uh, climb into that top yeah. 10. Do you, Do you think he is sleeper? the X factor? Combs. Who? Otani. Yeah. For the angels. Yeah. He, he needs to stay healthy. Mass and Hoffy. I don't care what oh, you say. Oh, oh, oh. I, th- oh, I thought, said Combs. I mean, <laughs> well, you got trout, you got Quintana, um, so, yeah, if you can get Otani healthy, you know, Justin Upton, Anthony Rendon, uh, Albert Pujols, it's his last year, so you know he's going to show up. Jose Iglesias, he's going to show up with a glove. Kurt Suzuki, and I love John Madden as the manager. So that's where that's where Joe I Madden. think man, Joe you know, John Madden uh, – or Joe, excuse me, makes them uh, a contender in the West. John Madden was a great coach, but uh, he, he yeah. coached – Coach football. football. My sports are mixed up. <laughs> All right. So, Javi, who we got at eight, bud? Let's see. Number eight, we got the the Rays, the Tampa Bay Rays. Pitching is always a strength for them. It's likely going to be so again. Um, the X factor is going to be uh, Ares Arena. Um, you know, yeah. if he if he's not a one time wonder uh, and just shows up for the playoffs, and if he's there all year, I think that team can uh, can make noise and compete with the Jays as well as the Yankees. Yeah, I agree with you there, Rosa Arena. Like that guy, if if he does not pull a, what I like to call a, a Kyle Schwarber. Um, and only have one good postseason and then just flake out um, the rest of the regular seasons. I Where I think that I like a Rosa Reina more than I like a guy like a Kyle Schwarber is that a Rosa Reina is, is more consistent, and he came up, and he's playing the position that he came up in, whereas Kyle Schwarber was switching from catcher, uh, mm-hmm. then maybe playing first base, and then all of a sudden playing left field, uh, and he wasn't a very good outfielder. So... You know, I think a Rosarena is the real deal, but only time's going to tell on that one. Yeah. Did you see your boy Schwarber throwing the guy out at home today? I did, man. I did. Yeah. Look, I love I love bad. Kyle Schwarber again. Like I love anybody who was on the 2016 team. I love Kyle Schwarber. I love Kyle Schwarber as a DH in the American League, though. Absolutely. Um, I I agree. I, I hope that's where he ends up. All right. So who we got at number seven, Hoff? We got uh, the Chicago White Sox. Uh, you got some good young arms, but you, yeah. you know none of them have proven it. Uh, you know they're they're young, but uh, I believe Dallas Kiko uh, is the only one that has like a, a three ERA. Um, the rest of them are in the four, so I mean they're young. They're gonna be good, but uh, let's see if they're gonna be able to play with the uh, the Twins and the rest of the big boys in the uh, the AL this year. Yeah, so the AL Central is going to be down just like the NL Central. Um, I think this is going to be a two-team race. I think it's going to be between the White Sox and the Twins. And for the White Sox, it really is a matter of Tony La Russa and how well that old-school mentality mixes in with these new-school kids. And, exactly. I, I mean, this team is very, very good. I don't know if you caught any of Tim Anderson's uh, uh, press release that they had there. He was on uh, Chicago Sports Radio here. Uh, and they asked him, they said, you know, how do you feel about the team this year? And he just said, F it. We're the best team in the American League, period. And so that's the swagger that I love from this team because, I, you know, I say it all the time. I'm, I don't root for the Sox, but I don't hate the White Sox. I'm a Cubs mm-hmm. fan. But the White Sox are so much fun to watch, man. Like the Braves and like the Padres, they are young, they are talented. 
they're going to be a very good team. I just, I, I have to see how well Tony La Russa mixes with this team. I agree. All right, so who we got at number six, Hoff? Number six, we have the uh, staying in the same division, Minnesota Twins. Brought back the same exact lineup that they've had in the you know the recent seasons, which has been one of the better lineups. Uh, added Gold Glove and Simmons, you know, to shore up the defense, uh, and they have a great rotation. You know, Maeda, and, and I'm a big fan of Barrios, and that's why I got them in front of the White Sox um, because they have two proven starters that uh, you know you know are going to get the job done. Yeah, so, I I love that pitching staff in Minnesota. Sorry, go ahead, Buck. Well, like I count, like I count, like I, I was, I was, I was just going to say that you said that the AL Central was going to be down, but Hoffy has two teams in the top ten. I of the said power it was going to be a two-team team race. I said it was going to be between the Twins and the White Sox. You need to put the Royals in there because they are no, adding some no, pieces. We don't. Going why? To why? Because you because you got the Midwest package. We need to put the Royals in there. No, Come because on now. they are they are starting to add some pieces. Like, like they're uh, like they're starting to make some it. moves. I right, do believe so, that the Royals are one year away from uh, making some serious noise. If 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 their young players don't, you know, hey, they'll be third place in their division this year. They're not going to compete for the playoffs, but I do well, think with right, the younger but, talent that they have coming up next year, they're going to be real good. Great. Along with so the they're Mariners, be ahead of the Indians and the Tigers. Woohoo! Like it's I, not the Indians like, anymore. The, the White Sox are going to be the team <laughs> in this. The White Sox and Twins are going to be the cream of crop of this division for the next five years. Um, I do love the addition of Maeda on this uh, roster um, and in this pitching staff. I I really like the Twins. I think that they probably win this division, um, and, but I think it's going to be a close race. So I, I, I'm good with the, the Twins there at six. Who we got at five? We got uh, the New York Mets. You go. You got Noah Syndergaard. Uh, he's returning. He's the X Factor. Jacob Degrom, Marcus Stroman, who was an opt out, uh, as well as they got a solid six. Uh, you know, front six with Lindor, James McCann. Uh, I know you're high on these Mets. Um, yeah. But I got, I got, you know, the other four teams in front of them were there last year in the playoffs, so that's why I got them outside and outside of the right. four. I, I'm very high on the Mets. I have them uh, in my top three. I love this pitching rotation, man. I think a lot of people are sleeping on the fact not not that they got Francisco Lindor because we've already seen the blue hair, we've seen him at Mets camp, we've seen that he's doing all the things that Lindor so does and having fun, but the sleeper of all the moves was the Carlos Carrasco deal. Having Carlos Carrasco added to that already deep rotation, and Carlos Carrasco is potentially an ace. Like, I mean, this guy could be a number one on a whole lot of teams out there right now. Um, so I really love that pickup. Um, and so I, for me, I think the Mets are, are a little bit low on your power rankings, but I also don't have a problem with somebody, you know, having them down at five until they can prove that they can win. Um, because, you know, we all know the Mets – you know, they do what they do best. They met and <laughs> the Mets always find a way to, to just met it up. And it's, it's, it's really bad. So, um, we'll see how it goes. Uh, who we got at a Bauer. Oh God, stop it. With they Bauer. would win the world series if they added Bauer. Okay. okay. Hoffy, once again, disregard anything Buck or Wyatt say <laughs> about baseball. Who we Trevor got at Bauer four? is the greatest pitcher of all time. So at number four, we got uh, the Atlanta Braves behind Soraka, uh, Freed, Anderson, Morton, uh, as well as a, a potent offense. Uh, I believe they have one of the most underrated pitching staffs. I've been saying that you know off, all off season. Uh, retaining Ozuna was big, and uh, I believe I said it last week. Acuna is yet to be the best player on his team, and we know that he's you know one of the best in the league. So yeah. I think, uh, like I said, this is going to be a year for him. This this Braves team is going to be very very good, um, and I can't wait to see um, how well they play. I think Acuna is coming of age. I think Acuna is. I think Acuna can win the MVP this year. Mm -hmm. um, he is so damn good, and they've got a really deep lineup, and a, a like you said, an, an underrated pitching staff. However, that's where I have them behind the Mets. Just because I feel like the Mets pitching staff is just a little bit better uh, with the addition of Carrasco to DeGrom. Um, and, and, and if you can have Syndergaard healthy, I mean, that just puts them way over the top. Um, yeah. So that's why, for me, I had them over the Braves. But I have no problem with the Braves at four um, at all. Who we got at three? Number three, we have uh, 
the evil empire in New York Yankees. <laughs> um, you know, the upside of Garrett Cole, Severino, Corey Kluber. Can he have a, you know, is he coming back from injury? Uh, Talian, uh, back behind some of the most powerful bats in the game. Uh, Gary Sanchez, uh, what is he, 147 last year, uh, batting average in 49 games. Yeah. So uh, I think he's going to have a bounce back year. Um, yeah. So I think he's going to be a huge, huge uh, factor for the Yankees to add into their, you know, what was already a pretty powerful uh, lineup the past several years. Yeah, and, and I don't know how much it pained you as a Boston guy to have two New York teams in your top five, but I'm pretty sure that was tough for you. Um, <laughs> but I I love the Yankees too. Look, I, I think that the Yankees are going to do A lot of people don't realize that this is a make-or-break year for Glaber Torres. Glaber Torres, if he does not perform this year, is going to deal with an offseason where shortstops are going to be at a premium. The mm-hmm. shortstop free agent market at the end of this season is is unbelievably high. And to have, you know, a to have Glaber Torres knowing that that's coming to him, I think he's going to have a really really solid year. This kid is really good. I yeah. love Glaber Torres. <clears throat> I hate the fact that the Cubs had to give him up. However, they did get a World Series out of it. So, but the Glaber Torres I I think Glaber Torres is a probably a top I'd say top five shortstop in the game right now. I just would. Yeah. I really he, like he had a he had a nice play today up the middle. Uh, I don't know if you saw that too. A slide and play, you know, up spinning throw to first to get the out. So yeah. uh, I think he's going to have a hell of a year. Yeah, I I do too. Um, and I the Yankees look for me. It's pitching. The pitching yep. has to hold up. It's been pitching for the last five years with Absolutely. them. Absolutely. Um, and if that holds up, they they could be a dangerous team. I think I know where we're going with number two and number one. Why don't we tell the uh, the fans here who's at number two? I can't wait to uh, you know see how this unfolds in the end. But I got number two, San Diego Padres. Uh, they you know they stole your guy, you Darvish. They added Blake Snell, yeah. uh, you know Joe Musgrove, uh, Donaldson, Paddock. I mean they're probably going to have one of the best rotations in the league. Um, you know if not behind you know who I got at number one. Uh, but they also returned their entire starting lineup from last year. They led the league in, in runs as well as they uh, signed a, a really good second baseman out of uh, the Korean baseball uh, league. So yeah. they're going to be uh, they're going to be pretty good. And they have uh, some young players down in the uh, down in the tunnel that can come up, give them some you know some games to allow some players like Tatis and some of you know Machado to get some rest and, and be healthy for the playoffs. Yeah, look, the the Padres, to me, are the most exciting team in baseball. I love Fernando Tatis Jr. Um, I love the flair that he plays with. I just uh, watched a a, a video with him for the MLB, the show 21, where he's talking about, you know, some people say I'm breaking the unwritten rules, and some people say, uh, you know, I have too much flair. And what do I have to say to those people? Too bad. And I love this kid's mentality. I love the way that he plays the game. I love the way that he carries himself. I love everything about Fernando Tatis Jr. I also love these San Diego Padres. Um, I think, like you said, they added Blake Snell, you know, Cy Young Award winner. Mm -hmm. They added uh, Hugh Darvish, who was second in the NL Cy Young last year. They, They added a lot of starting pitching to this team that was already pretty good at starting pitcher um and they've got a really deep bullpen so they also added the the closer from the braves as well yeah Mm -hmm. and and to add to to add those guys into a team that was already one of the best offenses in baseball the best offense in baseball last year is really where i think that they are ahead of the dodgers especially the dodgers coming off of a um yeah melanson um, as well as yeah. you know, we we saw it against against Snell is they don't hit lefties very well, um, right. and the Padres can can attack them with lefties both from you know the starting rotation as well as the bullpen, and they're a team that likes to get funky with starting you know starting their bullpen before they go into their you know their starting pitchers and such like that. Um, so you know they're going to have the matchup uh, when it comes to the Dodgers you know w- with their players, their rotation, etc. So. Uh, I do think that they can beat the Dodgers, but I think uh, until you beat the champs, you got to leave them there at number one. I agree. And uh, so at number one, no surprise to anybody, 
Yeah, I mean, they, they check every box. They got three potential Cy Young winners. I know you're not a fan of, of Bauer, but, he, you know, he won it last year. So, I mean, he's going to – yeah, he did. Likely he's going to be there again. Uh, you got Price, Urias. I mean, they're going to have a solid bullpen. Position players in Betts, Bellinger, Seager, Smith. Yeah. Um, you know, and I, we haven't even mentioned my guy Mookie Betts. So, they're going to yeah. probably be, you know, right there at the end. And I'd love to see, you know – the Padres, the Dodgers, or even the Braves at the, uh, you know, in the NLCS. So, yeah, and, I, go ahead. Well, I, like, I was going to run through the top 10 there and ask you a few questions, but go Yeah, ahead. I, real, real quick on the Dodgers. Look, I, I do love the Dodgers. I It's very hard to repeat. Once you won the Absolutely. World Series, coming back the next year, it's very tough to repeat, especially when you've got a team like the San Diego Padres hot on your tail. Yeah. It's going to be a very tough season for the Dodgers. It's going to be interesting to see how they perform. Like you said, I'm not very high on the Bauer pickup. I get he's the reigning NL Cy Young, um, but it was only his second good season out of nine, where his ERA was even under four. So I am not high on on Trevor Bauer as as being dominant. Um, but you know he's a solid four, solid five pickup. If that's where they're going to have him in the rotation, that's a solid pickup for them. Um, so go ahead, Buck. Yeah, so just running through your uh, top ten here, like you had the Dodgers at one, Padres at two, Yankees at three, Braves at four, Mets at five, Twins at six, the White Sox at seven, the Devil or the Rays at eight, the Athletics at nine, and Blue Jays at number ten. The few teams that I don't see on there, one of them being the Cleveland Indians, the other one being the Astros and the Phillies. Why did you leave those particular three teams out of the top ten? Did you see the so Cleveland you- Indians lost? The, the Indians are not going to be in the top 15, I don't believe. Um, the Astros, well, I just wanted to keep, you know, Combs' blood pressure down this week, so I figured I'd just, you know, <laughs> leave them at number 11. Um, I mean, th- they lost a lot in the pitching. Uh, they do have one solid ace there in, in Granky, but th- their young players are going to have to step up, uh, and I don't see that happening. Uh, and then what was the third? The third one was the Phillies, you said? The Phillies, yep. I mean, the Phillies are going to – I think they'll be decent, um, but I think they needed a, a couple other players. I like Harper when it comes to just throwing on the YouTube highlights, but I really don't think that he helps that team. I mean, look, look at the talent that he, he is, uh, and then look at him leaving the Nationals and what happened with the Nationals that year. Um, they ended up winning a World Series. So He's a I'm great not, player, but a cancer to a team. Yeah. I mean, Aaron Rodgers. Mm. Wow. Of course, he had to pull that crap. We went an hour and a half without talking about Green Bay Packers, and then I think it comes with thirsty. Hey, hey, hoppy, hey and I was—I wasn't even the one who said it. I wasn't even the one who said it. That's the best part. Wait, so does Combs have to drink? I thought it was every time that Wyatt did. mentions the Packers. <laughs> but do you have to? Is that the rules, or is it? Is it just uh, Timothy Leonard was here earlier? You got to answer this question. So if if somebody other than me mentions the Packers, does everybody still have to drink then? Yeah, I, I need this answered. I, I'm thirsty, so I'm drinking. And, it, and, and we just derailed just like that. So, Hoffy, let me go ahead and pop your top 10 back up here on the list. Out of these top 10 teams right here, like on your first preseason Major League Baseball power rankings of the 2021 season, of those 10, what teams do you see not making the playoffs this year? Ooh. Ooh, that's a good one. Um, I don't believe the Devil, uh, excuse me, the Rays, uh, you know. Every year they're there, but they lost a lot this year. They traded a couple of pieces. Um, they do have a, you know, the number one prospect, uh, you know, in the shortstop that they have. He says he wants to be there this year in Wanda Franco. Um, I mean, if he has a hell of a spring training and they keep him, you know, on the roster, but the guy hasn't played above single A ball yet. So uh, that's going to be a key factor. But I feel like the Rays are, are going to be, um, you know, one of those teams that has has a little – World Series hangover and, and falls falls out of the top ten. So why do you have them ranked in the top ten? Because right now that you know they were there last year, so you got to have champion. them there. I mean, they're defending AL champions, but you know, I'm just I'm just I, I making you them, defend your pick there, but like, I bounced I, them between I, I like you know you. eleven nine. I mean, but I think within the first week, I won't be surprised if they're out of it. Uh, Hoffy, I saw while we were on here the the chat was just blowing up from the time that we started the segment to the time that we ended it. It was 62 comments came up on the, on the screen. So you got, you got the chat blowing up here. Um, Whatever I can do. (laughs) 
So let's see here. Let me go through some of these and see what I can find. Um, that being said, while you do that, um, just to help you out, you know, Buck, because I know you're going to be watching, you know, your, your baseball. You got Bobby Witt Jr. He's the number one prospect right now. He's a shortstop for your Royals. Yep. Check out him. Uh, you got Daniel Lynch and Asa Lacy. So that's where I say next year, because I think those three will not be on the roster this year. So I think next year when they join the, the Royals, that's when they're going to be a, a player, especially with my guy Ben Benintendi. And we uh, signed some of our core pieces to mm-hmm. some to some extensions, so that, that helps out a lot as like as well. So yeah, it, and Vinny says uh, the Blue Jays are better than the White Sox. How do you feel about that right now? I like it. I mean, I, I'm not a Yankees fan, so I would love to see you know, and I don't think my Red Sox are going to be there this year. Um, so yeah, I'd like to see the Blue Jays. Heck, I'd like to see the Blue Jays in the World Series. Uh, I mean, being from Boston. Um, the farm system for the Blue Jays is right there in New Hampshire. So, I mean, I've gotten to see all these, you know, these young core guys grow up. So, I mean, I, I've enjoyed watching them play. And, uh, you know, I look forward to hopefully seeing them, you know, make a run at it this year. So, Hoffie, my question for you, buddy. Uh, bring up the top 10 here, real quick. So, as we look at it here, we've got the Dodgers, the Padres. Uh, everybody knows the World Series contenders here, okay? You've got one and two, definite, um, you know. What teams not named the Dodgers, the Padres, um, the Yankees? Or here, I'll just I'll just make it even better. What team not in this top ten do you think Angels. has the best shot to <laughs> win the World Series of these teams? And the, not in the top ten, which one has the best shot to make it to or win the World Series? Just be a complete uh, dark horse nobody's expecting. I believe the Angels. Um, I mean, a lot's going to rely on. On Otani, like I said earlier, um, you know, Trout's been in the league for 10 years. He's 0-3. You got Pujols, who's he's going out this year as his last year. Uh, they added Quintana. And, and you do have Justin Upton, Anthony Rendon, Albert Pujols, Iglesias, Suzuki, uh, and Joe Madden. I'll make sure I get it right this time as their manager. So I think uh, the Angels could be a team that, uh, you know, wins the West and, and goes for a run. So uh, this comment brought up here, I haven't watched baseball since Pete Rose. Do the Reds just not exist anymore? Well, they did exist, then they got rid of the best pitcher in baseball and Trevor Bauer, and now they don't exist anymore. That's basically what happened. <laughs> hey, Combs, can you tell him that uh, Bauer wasn't even the best pitcher on the Reds last year? Cy Young. Bauer wasn't even the That's best I pitcher say. on the Reds last year. Who was the Cy best Young. pitcher on the Reds last year? Oh, my God. Jesus Christ. I give up with you, Wyatt. I really do. Like, I don't understand. Just stop. We're done. Cy Young. We're done. He shouldn't right, have even been the Cy Young. That should have been you, Darvish. <laughs> with that being said, uh, Hoffy, thank you for joining us here on your weekly Power Rankings segment. I look forward to, uh, you know, we are going to save this first preseason week here and then kind of compare it to the end just to see, you know, how like how things have fluctuated in the end. Do you have, do you have anything closing thoughts before we head out? Nope. I look forward to uh, joining you guys next week. Thanks for having me. All right. Anytime, man. See you, Hoffy. Peace out, guys. Later, Hoff. See you, bud. All right, guys. So that is Hoffy, the baseball lackey, with his uh, preseason Major League Baseball top 10 power rankings. Uh, I was really hoping he would he would slide the Astros in there just to uh, get the goat there. But obviously, power rankings mean nothing at the end of the day. Let's just be flat out honest. <laughs> power rankings mean everything at the end of the day, sir, especially <laughs> when the Astros are not in it. So, yeah, there you go. All right, guys. So we are going to take a quick little break here on the Man Hour. After the break, we got some more sports headlines. So stay tuned with us here on the Man Hour as we'll return shortly.
Welcome back to the Man Hour, guys. Michael Buckeyes along with Brandon Combs and Wyatt Williams. If you have missed any part of the show whatsoever, you can download this episode on iTunes, Spotify, or iHeartRadio as well. Or you can catch us on YouTube.com forward slash Man Hour, and you can replay the episode as well. That's YouTube.com forward slash Man Hour. Be sure to hit that subscribe and like button as it helps us out more than you will ever, ever know. So let's welcome the boys back onto the show, Wyatt and Combs. Guys, we had a great little power seg- seg- segment with Javi there, so we are going to have to push some stuff back for tomorrow. So way or no way, Combs is going to come at you tomorrow, so we will uh, you know, tweak a little things just to make things work, just to keep the show in on tact here and on time. So those of you that are expecting way or no way will be here tomorrow here on Big X Force Radio 96.1. Combs, I, can, I know you're just, depressed. Can't we just remove Wyatt from the show instead? Uh, no, because Wyatt brings the best hair in all of Indiana. But he's got it show. covered in a hat tonight, and he's got Green Bay Packers crap in the background. Oh, yeah. And on Have his freaking chest. Yeah, I mean, I would. I mean, why not? So let's go ahead and slide back over into sports headlines here. And I'm going to flip-flop some of the topics that we have in in order here. And we're going to talk about college basketball first here. So college basketball over over the weekend saw some upsets. Kansas, the KU Jayhawks, Rock Chalk Jayhawks themselves, did upset number two Baylor, uh, leaving Gonzaga and Michigan you know, to cruise to their wins here. So why I'm going to kick it to you first here. After that loss to Kansas, did are the Baylor Bears considered a top team in the NCAA basketball still? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think if you go undefeated for this long and continue to be a serious contender that, you know, you deserve to stay atop there. I mean, I'm sure they're going to drop a couple of spots, but when you look under them, everybody really has had a lot of bad losses here recently. I mean, just within the last four days today, number eight Villanova lost, or I mean, excuse me, Sunday the right Villanova lost uh, to Butler. So Butler unranked Villanova ranked eight. Huge upset. You had, that was huge. You had number five, Illinois lost to unranked Michigan state. Number four, Ohio state lost to unranked Michigan state. Number seven, Oklahoma lost to unranked Kansas state. Uh, 16, Virginia tech lost to unranked Georgia tech. Uh, 24, Missouri lost to unranked Ole Miss. Then, uh, I mean, so you mentioned, you know, Baylor as well. Baylor didn't really even lose a bad game. Kansas is a really good team and a conference yep. opponent as well. So when you On look at all that and all the teams that lost beneath them, the farthest they'll drop, I'm saying maybe five, maybe six. That, 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 it can't be much lower than that because they went undefeated for this long. They're, they're, there's only two teams in basketball that were undefeated them and uh, Gonzaga, of course. So, the worst I see him dropping here is uh, five because you had the number four team lost and you have the number five team. So Michigan will jump over them. Ohio State will drop because Ohio State lost again today to Iowa. Uh, so Iowa will jump up. There was, there was a lot of upsets here within the last four or five days. So uh, college, but, but, but it's what we expect at this time of year. You got March Madness just around the corner. Uh, things are really starting to spice up. Teams are you know on the brink. Are they going to make it? Are they not? So, I mean, things are really getting interesting all the way across the board. I'm really excited about this time of the year for basketball. It is the best. So, who is the best team in college basketball right now, Wyatt? Gonzaga. Uh, unde- Gonzaga. Undefeated. God, they, they I don't have their schedule with me, but they have beat probably, I mean, off the top of my head, probably six or seven ranked teams and beat them handedly. Like, these aren't even close games. So, I mean, they're number one. They've got, like I said, they're undefeated, haven't lost anybody. They're beating really good ranked teams. So I just, I can't count Gonzaga. You know, if, if you've beat all these teams single-handedly, you're still undefeated and you're the number one team in the nation. I, I got them at the, that's the best team in college basketball right now. And, and I don't think, I don't think it's close. Now, once we get to March Madness, of course, everything changes. You know, you know, your, your one seed could right. lose, you know, at any point, you never know. But at, at this moment, I, th- I think it's Gonzaga's title. Uh, in their hands right now, they it's their title to lose for sure. Good, Combs. Yeah, I you know as far as the best in basketball right now, like I really feel like th- this is one of those years where it is wide open heading into the tournament. There are so many very good teams. I mean, Gonzaga, you know, like Wyatt mentioned, is undefeated. Uh, Michigan is very very good. Very good with, team with, with Franz Wagner and Isaiah Livers. They are a very solid team in Michigan. Um, Illinois, man. Illinois is a, a very good team as well. 
Um, and, and then e- even Iowa. Look, I know Iowa's down. Um, you know, they lost a couple games in a row there. Uh, they beat Ohio the State season. today, or, uh, Sunday. Yeah, so uh, Big one. Iowa, Iowa is one of those teams that that is very good. There are going to be a – this is one of them years where – the top four seeds are going to be stacked. Whereas your one through four seed in, in every bracket region is going to be stacked. Um, it's going to be a very good tournament. It's going to be one of those tournaments where I feel like, you know, it could be won by, by a six seed because of, of the parody in college basketball. Purdue. If, if you, you force me to pick one right now, I, I think I would probably go with Michigan being the best team in college basketball though. Yeah, so uh, so Combs, you brought it. You brought up the name Iowa uh, earlier in the year. Iowa was ranked as high as number two, if I'm not yeah. not mistaken. They, they were a really good basketball team. But to flash back to what uh, Wyatt said, Gonzaga really hasn't played that many good teams. Wyatt, like, let's be honest. Ooh. There, there is a reason why Gonzaga is like number one and number two. Every year, yes, they are. Yes, they they do play a couple good teams earlier in the season. Like they played Kansas earlier in the year. They played West I'm, Virginia. I pull up the schedule right now. Like and they, like and then they also played Iowa, which was also very very big wins. But since then, they haven't played anybody. I mean, their division is so trash, and there is a reason why Gonzaga, you know, gets knocked out in the Sweet Sixteen every year. Is it's it, the Elite like Eight once they. Or it, or it, either it's way, either way, they it's get they get they get knocked out because they're not used to playing those big powerhouses teams like Iowa and Michigan and Kansas, like and et cetera. So they there is no beat, way they, they beat they, Iowa they, already by eleven, though. I mean, here, here, get this: they beat Kansas, they've beat which they lost to Kansas. I, know, I mean, excuse me, never mind, wrong team. They the like, Baylor lost to Kansas. They, they beat Kansas. Uh, they beat West Virginia, who's ranked ten. They've beat Iowa. Uh, let's see here. They beat Virginia, who's ranked 15. Right. They, I mean, they've beat a lot of really good teams. And, B, and BYU is a, is a good team. BYU too. is a good team. But you, you are correct 100%. They, they do have a um, weak, a, a weak uh, conference, I should say. that. Weak, their conference opponents always suck. That's, that's mainly the reason why they always get into the tournament is because, so, right. I mean, Santa Clara is not that great of a team. <laughs> How many times is a team that is, is number one heading into the tournament ever really go through and win the tournament? You know what I mean? Like it's usually yeah. the the uh, the the number one team. Right. Usually is the first number one seed that goes out. Well, two uh, tournaments so. ago, the number one team going in was Virginia, and Virginia lost to UMBC. They were the first ever sixteen seed to beat a one seed. So you yeah. are one hundred percent correct. A lot of the times, the one seeds do fold. But oh man, Gonzaga. Then Virginia did return and win the national title. They the did. They did return and win the national championship. Right. Gonzaga can never get it done. They're due. I, I just, I just feel like this is that year. They have a great, great team. I mean, and it's weird because the best team in my, the best player they've had in the recent history was Rui Hachimura, and really, as soon as he went to the pros, once Rui was gone, they've they've been a whole new team, and, and that's what everybody talked about was Hachimura's absence is going to be huge for him. But they've bounced back amazingly they have they, real matchup problems with uh illinois and, and michigan i i i don't disagree with you uh they they do play a really they, they so their schedule is really weird they either play like great teams that are like ranked in the top 25 or they play teams that like haven't seen the top 25 since like 1995 or something crazy right because of because of how terrible their 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 conference is so They've beat the really good teams. I mean, like I said, they beat Iowa by 11. So that's why I'm such a big believer in them, you know. But Iowa, speaking on Iowa, Buck, was that your pick, Iowa? Uh, my pick and the best team? No. Yeah. I, 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 I would say Michigan is the most complete team just from like uh, from from guard down to post, right? But the, but the team that I would look out for in the March Madness tournament is is the Kansas Jayhawks, and that pains me to say as a Kansas State Wildcat fan, They're just good. because the really Kansas, good. because the Kansas Jay, Jayhawks, they were on a stretch where 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 the, I think they lost four four or five games in a row, yeah, the first time the ever 25. since like nineteen ninety six, right? Yep. This is this is this is this is this will probably be the first year ever that they do not win the Big Twelve Conference in either regular season or postseason tournament. 
With that being said, though, they're going to be hungry, and they're going to have that chip on their shoulder. So I think the Kansas Jayhawks are the most scariest team heading into March Madness Tournament, if that's the question. I, I agree with you. I think Kansas is a really good team. But touching on Iowa, like I was saying, they Iowa is my sleeper team. I think Iowa has got all their dumb losses out of the way. That's the biggest thing coming into the tournament. Have you got your dumb losses out of the way? They went have through that you, one really rough stretch. Oh, yeah. They, they lost, lost like, IU twice. Yeah. Uh, you know, they had a really, really rough stretch, but they just beat, like I said, they just beat Ohio State. Uh, they're, they're, they're climbing back up to where they need to be. The biggest thing they've got to solve, they have the best player in the nation in Luca Garza, but they have got to solve the defensive issues they have if they're going to be a contender. I think they do will. You think, do you think that, that that losing streak in the middle of the season benefits them? Because yes. instead of being a one seed, they'll end up being a three seed and maybe have an easier road in the tournament? So I don't think they'll have an easier road, but I think, like I was saying, like it's the dumb losses. You've got to get those out of the way before you hit that tournament because when you hit the tournament, you can't afford a dumb loss because that means your season's over. You're out. Right. So right. coming in as a three seed, the pressure's not on you. Or not a three seed. They would be most likely a two seed at the moment because, like I said, you know Iowa just beat Ohio State, so they'll jump up for that. Illinois lost. Ohio State is another really good team. Uh, that's going to come in now because of their last couple of losses, they're going to drop significantly. They've lost their last three in a row. They lost to Michigan, then they lost to Michigan State, who is unranked, then they lost to Iowa. So Ohio State's going to drop significantly. Ohio State and Iowa are my two. Who did two, Illinois lose to? They just beat Wisconsin, um, didn't they? Yes, they did, but Illinois, let me get it here. Illinois oh, lost to six unranked six. Michigan State. So Michigan State beat, oh, okay. the Michigan State beat both. Um, Conference game. Yes. Yeah. So, but coming into but they it, they are still the. I, I I think they are still ranked number one in the Big Ten right now, tied with Michigan at number one, if I'm not mistaken, with both three losses. Right? They're yeah. They're no, they're either Illinois one or two. They're up six there. Losses. They're they're second. Uh, I'm, I'm talking about conference loss. losses. Like it, it is not overall oh, losses because oh, oh. yeah, they, but Wisconsin they, or Michigan's only got one loss in the season, don't they? Yes, I thought right. they did. Yeah. yeah, you're right. I believe so. I'll check that, but yes, I believe it's it's one, if not one, it's maybe two. Um, yeah, it's no, and I think they're. I don't remember who their loss came they to. They lost to Minnesota earlier in the year. They they went to Minnesota and just laid a flat out dud. They lost by twenty, 20 yeah, twenty five points. I think I, I, I think it was. Gotcha. So yeah, no, moving so, forward here, why go ahead and complete your thought? Yeah, no, so. Um, Iowa's got to solve their defensive issues, which I think they will. They have the best player in college basketball right now, leading their team in Luca Garza. So I think that they're a really dangerous team. They're going to come in as a as a as a two seed, maybe a three, you know, possibly a one. I don't see it. Maybe they'll sneak up there and get that final one seed. So they won't have the pressure on them as much as what you know Gonzaga does. They won't have the pressure that these teams that are going to you know Michigan that has that one seed. So I think that that benefits them for sure. Yes, they are thirteen and one. I just got it up. Um, but I, I think that that really benefits them. They've got their dumb losses out of the way. They've just got to solve that defensive issue because uh, Luca Garza is an amazing scorer, and I think that's why he's going to be such a great NBA player because he focuses solely on offense and not really defense. That's the league we see today. It's more of an offensive scoring league. Right. So I think that's what benefits him as well in the future. But talking about college basketball here, um, they, they put up a lot of points. They got a really good team, especially their bigs. Their bigs are really good, and they play in a tough conference, so they play a lot of really good teams. So I think they'll be they'll be best suited for the tournament when it comes. So it like it, it is March first here, and you know conference tournaments start probably in about ten days or so, like the major ones, right? So one word answer here, Combs. Who do you have winning the NCAA tournament this season? If I had to put my money on it right now, I mean, it's really tough, um, you know, before you see the seedings and, and everything else. Um, right. But I, I'd really, I, I'd, I'd put my money, I really like Michigan, man. I really do. I, I think Michigan oh. is, and I, I get Gonzaga hasn't lost yet, but I think Michigan is probably, uh, probably the best all around team in the nation right now, for sure. Why? Who do you got? Iowa. They're my sleeper on that one a little bit. So I'm, I'm running with Iowa. So I just spent about five five minutes talking up the Kansas Jayhawks, and I'm not <laughs> going to go with them at all. I think they're going to lose in the in the in the Elite Eight, the, the, depending on pairings and stuff like that. 
But I'm going to go with like a, it's kind of a, like a dark horse, kind of of those teams that you know that you always see consistently in the tournament, but never get over that 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 hump. But Houston University of Houston Cougars, they look freaking amazing when I watched them on Saturday. I like I like I believe it was. So I, I I'm going to go with Houston. I I love the way they move the ball around, no selfishness, and yeah, it just it's the Houston Cougars is where I'm going to go with that. So. Let's let's go ahead and transition back over to the NFL a little bit here. We 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 are we are staying on the Russell Wilson kind of theme here, and so there are two big NFL quarterbacks that are that are kind of out there for the pick, right? Like 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 we have Russell and we have Deshaun Watson as well. Combs, I'm going to kick it to you first here. Who would you rather have on your team right now, Russell Wilson or Deshaun Watson? Deshaun Watson. Um... Not only is he younger, um, but I just think he's more talented. I, I think he is the more consistent quarterback at this point. Um, look, Russell Wilson, you can't go wrong with Russell Wilson. The guy's won a Super Bowl. He knows what it takes to win a Super Bowl. Should have two Super Bowl rings, really. Um, but, yeah, I I definitely um, would take at this point, I, I would go with Deshaun just mostly because I could go with Deshaun, you know, for – a very long haul, you know, Deshaun Watson could be the quarterback for my team for the next 10 years. Whereas Russell Wilson's maybe got six or seven left in them at the most, if right. that. So I'm going to Sean Watson. So why same question to you. If you are building a team right now, if I could find my mouse, there it is. Uh, Deshaun Watson or Russell Wilson. Uh, Deshaun Watson. Um, kind of bouncing off what Combs said here. Uh, I'm going with Watson because of you know talent and age. He's super young. He's he's just now starting to touch on that prime of his career, and also he he is you know he he is he is the second most valuable. I've said this many times on the show. He is the second most valuable football player in all of the in the in the NFL. Age that's huge. He's super young, and then talent. He's incredibly talented. Uh, he he is the new generation of of quarterback he is that athletic guy who can run around pick up those yardage with his legs but has also got a cannon for an arm that can put it downfield on a dot where you need it when you need it there so uh nothing against russell wilson i think russell wilson is an incredible quarterback but russell wilson is kind of you know russell wilson's in his prime but but he's got less time left and at this moment for the next 10 years deshaun watson will be more successful than russell wilson and i honestly in 10 years, I don't even know if Russ will still be in the league. So, you know, okay, I'm, well, I'm looking at so, the long term here. Yeah, so that's exactly where you're wrong is you are looking long term. NFL is a win now league. You cannot look five years down the road. Like, there is no minor league system. Like, you cannot draft a draft a, a, a quarterback and put him down in, in a in a double-A ball for three or four years, and when he's ready, bring him up, right? So – the I let you guys, you know, pat De, pat Deshaun Watson on the back all you want, and there's oh, a poll going go. like, oh, going oh, over God. here on the YouTube.com forward slash Man Hour page as well. Who would you rather have? And the correct answer is Russell. I mean, just like just like just like what Combs said, he has won a Super Bowl. You know, he he has had a good coaching around him. He he is a proven winner. Deshaun Watson wins games, yes, but what has he done in the playoffs? First round exit, much like much like Lamar Jackson is. They are not very good in the. Oh, let me. Read. They are trash in the playoffs. That's exactly what they are. Yes, you can put it on Bill O'Brien, yada yada yada. But at the end of the day, is Bill O'Brien throw, throwing the ball on the field? Is Bill O'Brien handing hand, handing the ball off? No, he's not. So that that is why you got to take Russell Wilson right now. I mean, let, let's be honest. Russell Wilson right now on any other team besides the. Green Bay Packers, the Kansas City Chiefs, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and that's it. He makes every team better besides those three three teams right now. Deshaun Watson doesn't. Why do you do this? What? It's, why Why do you make what? me come at you and, and make it sound like you've never watched a game of football? And you're, Buck, you played football at Kansas State. You should know this game better than any of us. But it's clear that week after week after week, when you start talking football, uh, that you have no clue what you're talking about. There we go. <laughs> there is no way that you can say Deshaun Watson doesn't make any team better. 
I didn't there say he doesn't no make any team better. This guy, this guy with the Houston Texans on a four and twelve team had a quarterback rating of hundred and two. Yeah. Do you know how incredibly hard that is for a okay. quarterback on a losing team to have such a high rating? Oh, uh, it, it, it is actually a lot easier than what you think be, because you play behind so much that the defense is so spaced off that, you know, they are nickel and diming you down on the field. How many touchdowns did he throw, Combs? Not very many, huh? Because they were nickel and diming down, down the field, and then when they got in the red zone, they clamped down, and he was a above-average quarterback how at many, best. How many touchdowns did he have? I, I want to see how significant this is. Uh the, but if you look at the teams around the NFL right now, Russell Wilson makes every team in the in the NFL better. But he had three. thirty-three touchdowns. A lot of yeah, those are I mean, mop up a lot, to though. duty. Yeah. Oh yeah. A, a lot of thirty-three the- touchdowns. A lot of those are mop up. Get, get stop, Buck. How's that stop. not a lot? He had he had nineteen You're in his silly. first season, twenty-six, twenty-six, then thirty-three this year. Forty-eight hundred yards, only seven picks, a QB rating of one twelve point four. So why what, this is what are where you I come not at seeing you. here that me this and, is me and where I come are missing at you and tell you that stats lie. Those are all padded stats toward the end of the game when 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 they're down by like thirty points, like at Fuck, some some point. Stop it. They were four and what? twelve. They were four four and twelve. So so you he doesn't so, have anything. What I, I'm, what are he you? Lost, what are you he seeing here? That me and, he me and Combs his are best clearly wide receiver. His other two wide receivers were hurt for half the year. He had a top had, five receiver like, core in all of the NFL. Stop it! He did not this Kiki year. Kuti he did not sucks. stop it. They lost Kiki Kuti DeAndre sucks. Hopkins. Will oh, Will Will Fuller wasn't even there for the whole you. season. He I got can't. he got busted for PD, PEDs for the last three games of the season. But that doesn't matter. Like at that point, they they still had Randall Cobb. They had Kenny Stills. Randall Cobb, Randall Randall Cobb, Cobb has, been, has trash, been good. Has been trash since he was in Green Bay. Randall right. Cobb has sucked ever you, since you he guys, has not been in a Packer uniform. You guys cannot talk drink? bad about Randall Cobb. Randall Cobb has not had the had the long end of the like uh, like uh, the stick since he left Green Bay Packer land. Let's That's his be choice. Flat honest. It was his choice to leave. Should have stayed in Green Bay. But oh with God. that with that being said, let's look at the teams that Go Deshaun Watson makes pe- that doesn't make <laughs> better. I'm going to Packers tell you he does not the make the Kansas City Chiefs better. He doesn't he does not make make the Packers better. He does not make the Seahawks better. He does not make the Buccaneers better. Packers. He doesn't even make the Colts better. Carson Wentz is a top 10 quarterback in the league. And Deshaun Watson does not make the Colts better than what they have right now. So with that being said, there are five teams that I named off the top of my head right off the bat. So so therefore, three versus five, three is smaller than five. So therefore, Russell Wilson, Fuck. by process of elimination, is better than Deshaun Watson. You're, you're like, I, I, I don't understand. What, what? Like, I, I just don't get it. I mean, I, I shouldn't be surprised because this is the guy who in amazing. his season running back rankings had had <laughs> – the freaking the best running back in football, King Henry, be, behind guys like Miles Sanders and Le'Veon Bell, and we're talking about the hurt. 2021 season. We're not talking about like all time. We're not talking about career. We're talking about heading into this year. You had Le'Veon Bell of the New York Jets, yeah, and Miles Wait, but, Sanders. But, but, did you just say if they wouldn't have Derrick hurt? Henry. Bell wasn't hurt. He just sucked. No, Le'Veon Bell. They they the basically the. Basically, the New York so let's Didn't flash he get back to Lady on Bell here. Chiefs? Yes, he did, yes. which was a which no, was a he got great dropped pickup. and picked up by the yeah, Chiefs. Yeah, it was a great pickup. Yeah, it, it helped them so much in that Super Bowl. Win. Oh, he, wait. But let's go ahead and just be flat out honest. If he would have played on the Jets this season, the Jets would have probably won five or six games, and the Jets didn't want that. They were in tank tank for Trevor Trevor mode all season, so they were cutting every valuable asset that could help them win, and that's why they cut They were not in tank for Trevor mode. They just sucked so bad because they had a terrible run game. They had a terrible coaching staff. They had had a terrible run game because they wouldn't give the ball to too late. They had a general manager and a head coach who said, hey, we're going to trade DeAndre Hopkins because we need to focus more on our run game, and then proceeded to go get a bottom five running back in the league. Mm. Who are you referring to, the Houston Texans? Yes, you David sw- Johnson, you, bottom five. I don't know that, about that. You, you you need to lay off that jungle juice. You should gear so. Oh, well, if he wouldn't have kept Jets. saying Packers, I wouldn't have drank so much. <laughs> Packers. With that, but but <laughs> but 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 okay, okay. Seriously though, though though though, Wyatt, give me the teams that Deshaun Watson doesn't make better 
if he would transfer to that team. Can, like, like if he goes to that team, they would not be a Super Bowl contender. They would not be better than what they are right now. Five of them. Or just tell me the teams that he wouldn't make b- b- better. Teams that he would make better or wouldn't? Wouldn't. Like, th- there's not one team in the league that he wouldn't make better. That, he like, would not Can- make Kansas, Kansas City. Better. Kansas City because they have a quarterback. I, I, I'm Okay, Kansas City. Um, Tampa. Tampa Bay. Green Bay. Um, that's it. That's it. Because those, all, those are all Seahawks. solid quarter. Yes, he would. He is better than Russell Wilson. No, he's not. Come on. Yeah, he is geez. absolutely better than Russell's. You are absolutely out of your mind. <laughs> out of your mind. So, guys, let's go ahead and take a quick little break. On the other side of the break, we are going to jump over <laughs> into the text line. If, if you guys want to talk about anything, any sports thing related, let us know. But then we're going to, uh, uh, like, uh, of, of course, pick some Monday night games as well. So, guys, we'll be, we, we have Shop Talk coming up right here on the Man Hour after this short little break. Welcome back to the Man Hour, guys. Michael Buckeyes along with Brandon Combs and Wyatt Williams. If you missed any part of the show whatsoever, head over to youtube.com forward slash Man Hour. You can check out the full show there, or you can also download the podcast form on iTunes, Spotify, and iHeartRadio as well. While you're over there at manhourradio.com, become a member as well. So there's $3 a month. You can join us on the after show every Monday through Thursday at 10 p.m. East Coast time. That is Man Hour Radio. Com. So let's go ahead and welcome the boys back on the show. Wyatt and Combs there, guys. So, Combs, has your blood pressure gone down a little bit since that break? My blood pressure never goes down. When I'm on the freaking this show with you, <laughs> who says stupid stuff like... It is not stupid. Deshaun man, Watson doesn't facts. make anybody better. Like, you are out of your mind. I gotta say, he, he doesn't make any not anybody better, but I'm telling you that Russell Wilson makes more teams better than no, Deshaun Watson does. No, he does not. No, he does not. So, anyway, we, we just spent all last week talking about with, with the Russell Wilson trade rumor how Russell Wilson is is a first half quarterback where he doesn't show up in the second half of seasons, right. and you agree That's, with it, and now you're telling me that he's freaking gonna make teams better. I agree with that about? because that is a coaching aspect. There, co- where, like, if where is sit- he going to go? Where he's going to have a better wide receiving core than he has right now? Where? Um. Name me one team he's going to have a better receiving core LA, than DK Metcalf. San Francisco, and Houston. He's not going to LA. Chicago. Which LA uh, team is Dallas, he going to? Dallas, Rams. No, stop it. 
like you're asking what what better receiver core? I mean, I I just named you five Saints. Well, six. he's not going to the Rams because they just traded for their quarterback, so he's not okay. going there. So they're not even. An no, here, here's the one. Here's the one that confuses me. Is the is the wide receiver core for the Texans is the one that just 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 mind boggles me. Which? So you said they're top five. Where are they specifically in the top five? Number five. Who do you have above them? Uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers at number one. They have probably the best receiving core right right now. Kansas City Chiefs. And then I would go with the Dallas Cowboys at number three. And then the L.A. Raiders at number four. Okay, and then... Or and sorry, the L.A. Rams. I'm sorry. Not the L.A. Raiders. So Rams. you're completely so the Packers, the, the Packers, the, the, the Bears, Cardinals. the Cardinals... Uh, you are. You, I you would guys say are looking Washington at individual players. players. Well, no, I could name, name you. I could name you. I could name you. Probably ten teams. Fitzgerald. I could name you ten teams right now. Fitzgerald aren't better than Cootie C- C- and freaking whoever the hell else they have. Yeah. What are because you? I, because it's that. Third They're better than Diggs. They're better than Diggs and company. The Bengals, like, like exactly Diggs and company. Who else does the Minnesota Vikings or sorry the Buffalo Bills have? Cole Beasley, Cole, Come on Cole Beasley's amazing. Cole Beasley's better than anything the Texans have. Uh, no, Absolutely, he would be a fourth receiver on that team. Oh my god! The Steelers, uh, as far as receiver core, Steelers too. Like at, at like like at number six, yeah. They would be four. They are, stop it, Buck. You are if, so. This is what I hate about you. Because even when we tell you you're wrong, you stick to your guns Denver. and you just what keep pushing Denver? buttons. There are Denver's at least trash. ten to twelve teams that are Chargers? better than the, the the Texans wide receiving core. At least Chargers. ten to twelve. See, you guys are failing to understand about the whole receiver core. It is from one to four plus a tight end. That is receiving core. You guys keep naming teams. Yes, Who they have. Who do the Keenan Texans Allen. have? I Did you even name you. the Texans tight end? Tight end? I don't name know. me the Texans tight end. Come on. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it is because they run four receivers like just like all the time. So it, like it doesn't really matter. I hate you. God, I hate you. God. So. <laughs> I'm going to have a Combs, heart attack on this show. Let's go day. ahead and finish the show in the uh, chat box there, in the old uh, Thrive Fantasy man, we, chat, look, chat the, line. The chat has been blowing up, man. Guys, we appreciate it, as always. Um, I mean, we've got over uh, 110 comments right now on the chat line. So that is absolutely amazing. Um, let's see where we can go. Um that is just the unread, NFL quarterback carousel becoming like the NBA where players dictate their destination. You can check out that blog by Tori Anderson on Man Hour Radio, but let's talk about that real quick. What? Is the NFL quarterback carousel becoming like the NBA where players are dictating their, their destination? We got a lot of quarterbacks um, on the move and a lot of quarterbacks saying they want to be traded. No, so, I mean, I could I could absolutely see where that comparison is made. That's a tough one to make, though, for me. Simply because when you look at it, I mean, even Deshaun Watson has said where he wants to go, but that doesn't necessarily that means he's going to be there. The the organization still has the power to keep him. The best one though, did you guys see the rumor? Speaking of Deshaun Watson, did you guys see the rumor where uh, I think it was Saturday he was called in for an office for a meeting in the in the Texans office, and they asked him like like what he wants for him to stay, and r- reporters say that he looked the GM right in the face and told him to f off and flipped him off and walked out. Did you guys hear about that? I, I did not. But that is amazing. Yeah. It was awesome, apparently. Like, if this is true, I gained so much respect for Deshaun Watson. I will say, though, the other thing that got brought up to me that I never realized, like, I feel bad for Deshaun Watson in the situation, but at the same time, I don't feel bad for him. A friend of mine brought this up to me. Because even after they traded away Deshaun, or excuse me, not Deshaun Watson, uh, after they traded away DeAndre Hopkins, he still chose to resign. Exactly. He still made that choice. So I will... Say that a, a friend brought that up to me, and I never thought about it that way, but it is true. He should have known right then, been like, Oh, okay, if they're trading away the best receiver in the league and he's not happy, maybe there's something going on here that I need to go to. So it was his choice to do that. So I, I, w- I will give it that. Uh, I, I think that quarterbacks are starting to realize that they are the most valuable commodity in the league. 
Um, you know, for a while, wide receivers and running backs were looked at as, as very hot commodities. You have to have a really good quarterback in this league to be a contender. And if a quarterback is not happy, they're tired of watching the wide receivers and the running backs and the defensive players say, hey, look, we want out, trade us. The quarterback's like, you know what? Look, I'm not happy either. Why do I stay? So they are starting to do the same thing. I don't think it's as bad as the NBA. Um, I don't think we'll ever see a super team. I don't think that, you know, these guys are going to be able to dictate where they go because ultimately you can say, yes, trade me. But like Buck pointed out earlier, very few players in the NFL have a no trade clause. So if I want to trade you to the Jacksonville Jaguars for a 10th round pick and there is no 10th round, I, I'm going <laughs> to trade you. And you're going to go play for the Jacksonville Jaguars. So, hey, look, I'm glad you weren't happy here, but go have fun in a dysfunctional organization like the Jacksonville Jaguars or the New York Jets or the Chicago Bears. Like, those are, are, are three landing spots for quarterbacks right now that I think are death traps for quarterbacks. And, yes, I'm a Bears fan saying that the Chicago Bears are a death trap for any quarterback to come there right now. Yeah, and just just to add to your point, point there, Wyatt, like many people are saying, you know, Watson is just going to sit out the sit out the like sit out the season and and kind of force her hand, right? No, he won't. Well, you guys under you guys do understand like if Watson doesn't report to training camp, right? He, basically, his contract freezes. So that so that that means he will have to sit out for five years because he signed a five year hundred and some odd million dollar contract. Yeah. He has to, he, he, he has to sit out quote retire for five years before he is a free agent. So if he were to retire Actually, this, I think this there's year, a stipulation in the NFL, Buck, not to cut you off, but I think there's a stipulation in the NFL in the uh, in the collective bargaining agreement that after two years you become a free agent. You can retire. You have to sit out for two seasons, and then you become an unrestricted free agent. Okay, I believe. So so then let's just go ahead and add to that point. We saw Lady on Bell set out a full season. He was yeah. arguably a top two, top three run. run, run a tailback in all of the NFL sit out a season. He he gets cut by the New York Jets. Yes, he got cut by the by the New York Jets just a yeah, year. But like a year we after we that. know that running backs are a dime a dozen. A quarterback talent right. is not a dime a dozen. But uh, they are running right backs, now. I can Let's find you a running back in the fifth round. I can find you a a wide receiver in the fifth round who can be a top two wide receiver on your team. That doesn't happen with quarterbacks, to be honest with you. I mean, look, Dak. You know, it is one of those who who was a diamond in the rough. You know, they found him. I believe what did they draft him in the fourth round. Um, fourth round so, yeah. yeah. So, Wait, the, who, who it does it? happen, but Dak. It's Dak. So there, it does happen, but it's very rare. Um, and so I just, I I don't. Th I it's not the same when you compare a quarterback to a running back or a wide receiver because quarterback talent is so much more necessary. Um, however, if the Texans feel like they're going to lose him anyway, why not force his hand and be like, fine, you don't want to play for us, don't play at all? I would. I mean, like, yeah. give me if what I'm asking for him, full form. And, like, yeah, and, 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 and so that is how we're going to end the show here, 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 guys. But before we head out, let's pick some uh, games here for the Monday night, night, night games. Let's stick to the NCAA sure. basketball here real quick. Wyatt, who do you got in the UNC North Carolina Tar Heels games versus the Syracuse game? Uh, I'm going to take North Carolina. Combs, who do you got? North Carolina. I'm taking Syracuse. Just North Carolina just doesn't look good this year. I, I don't know. Just some, something about them. Just it's just all off. the blue bloods are off. Yeah, except for Kansas now, right? They are fine. They're, they're starting to find their groove. They're starting yeah. to get their groove again. Yeah. So uh, sticking in the NCAA here, Oklahoma take on Oklahoma State on a big Monday matchup here. Why? Who do you got? Uh, Oklahoma. They're a really good team. So yeah, uh, yeah, Oklahoma. I'm going Oklahoma State with the upset. I'm going with Oklahoma State as like a lock as well. I think the Big Twelve is the best conference from top to bottom, hands down. Besides the Big, big Ten, the, too, the, so the, the, the Big Ten is very, very tough. Let's switch over to NBA. Indiana Pacers take on the Philadelphia 76ers. Wyatt, who do you got? Uh, Sixers, they got a lot of MVP caliber talent uh, there. Uh, Joel Embiid is great. Their, their whole team is playing really well right now, so I'll take the Sixers. Combs? I'm going Pacers. Uh, I really like what the Pacers are doing out there in Indiana. I, I know the Sixers have a really good squad, but I, I really like the Pacers. I think that they are a sleeper team. Joel Embiid is playing at a very, very high caliber right now. Give me the 76ers and, the, and this one. Former Kansas on. Jayhawk, too. Yeah, I, I saw that for four years. Yes, I, I, 
I, <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> move, move. Stay, staying in the NBA, you have the U, U, Utah Jazz take on the New Orleans Pelicans. Why? Who do you got? Um, New Orleans Pelicans. I'm a big supporter of Zion and company there. They got a really good young squad, so I'll take New Orleans on the upset. The Utah Jazz also have a very young squad um, and probably one of the best players in the game right now. Um, so I'm going to go with the Utah Jazz Joker. the Pelicans. Yeah, uh, I, I do like the Joker. Uh, give me uh, the Utah Jazz all day long in this one. Now let's move over to hockey. You do have the Minnesota take it on Vegas. Wyatt, who do you got? I'll take Vegas in this one. Uh, yeah, I'm taking Vegas too. I, I like Vegas as well. When Vegas came Hockey's into the so game, game into the NHL, I kind of told myself I was going to root for them. You know, just 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 kind of like you know, yeah. like in, like in I will never gamble on a hockey game, man, because it is so tough yeah. to pick a winner in hockey. There's so many. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Usually in like a you usually in the NBA, if it's a mid game week, you can pick the home team nine times out of ten, and you'll be right. But hockey, you throw everything out the like out the window. Yeah. Out the hat. Wasn't it? Wasn't it two years ago? The Stanley Cup playoffs. They had uh, uh, what was it? All of the one seeds except for one lost in the first round of the Stanley Cup playoffs. Yeah, and I believe that was the year that uh, I believe it was an eight seed versus a seven seed in the Stanley Cup final. Yes, yes, it was ridiculous. It was All the right. Ovechkin and company won that one, didn't they? Yeah, that was his first yeah. title, if, if, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. So, guys, that that is going to be it for the Man Hour. You can join us every. Day here on Vegas Sports Radio, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. East Coast time to 5 p.m. East East Coast time. And then, of course, you can follow us on YouTube.com forward slash Man Hour. You can watch the live version of us as well. And, of course, head over to ManHourRadio.com. Pick yourself up with some merchandise. Combs, any closing thoughts? Man Hour Nation, rise up. <laughs>